This is Glow in the Dark Radio. 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 The Science Fiction Podcast with original independent science fiction written and performed by Mike Luoma with music by Kevin McLeod the Vatican Assassin Trilogy and the Adventures of Alibi Jones by Mike Luoma are available in ebook, trade paperback and audiobook wherever you find your books online get links and details at glowinthedarkradio.com This is the Science Fiction Podcast, Glow in the Dark Radio. I'm your host, your writer and reader, Mike Luoma. I have Chapter 17, Vatican Abdicator, on the way. We've got BC out at the new Solar Alliance base, Ceres Central, spending some quality time with Anita and preparing humankind's defense as two alien threats loom. He's about to get some news on both of these fronts. And it won't be good. That's coming up in Chapter 17 of Vatican Abdicator on Glow in the Dark Radio. A big thank you to patrons who help keep this whole podcast going. So I just want to say thank you for being a supporter. If you are a patron, you know who you are. If you want to become a patron and help keep the podcast going, I would welcome any assistance you can provide. You can do so at Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash glowinthedarkradio. You can also find that by going to glowinthedarkradio.com. Patrons can do $2, $5, or $10 a month. Pledge that towards the podcast, and the fine folks at Patreon will ding your card, take a cut, and give me some after that each month. So that's how it works. You become a patron and help support the podcast on a monthly basis through that site, Patreon. Again, if that sounds interesting, patreon.com slash glowinthedarkradio, or just go to glowinthedarkradio.com or mikeluoma.com and follow the links to Patreon. Well, I hope you got Vatican Assassin, the special 15th anniversary edition audiobook for free. Because that is done now. I've been combing the sites and I see that it has gone back up to full price, like $11 most places, $10.99. But yes, it was for the first quarter of the year, it was available for free. So I hope you got the chance to get Vatican Assassin. The 15th anniversary edition, special edition audiobook with the voice cameos for free. Next thing I have coming up is the Smashwords July Summer Winter Sale. Yes, depending on what hemisphere you're in, it's either summer or winter. They do not discriminate, which is kind of nice for a change for my friends and, and for you who are down under in the Southern Hemisphere. Australia, New Zealand, and some other places. It's kind of cool. The podcast is downloaded all around the world, which is pretty neat. Thank you. So again, that's the July summer winter sale at Smashwords, July 1st through the 31st. I'm going to put the big books on sale, so they'll be 50% off. You'll be able to get the Vatican Assassin Trilogy, the new edition of the trilogy, which we're listening to on this podcast. And you'll be able to get the Chronological Omnibus, the Alibi Jones Chronological Omnibus. Both of those will be 50% off, so both are $249 each, just under $250. Some ebooks coming up on sale as part of the Smashwords July Summer Winter Sale at Smashwords.com. You'll find a link in the show notes. Coming up next, we have Chapter 17 of Vatican Abdicator on Glow in the Dark Radio. 
Hi, I'm Nuke Chas, the host of Nutty Bites. And hi, I'm Tech, Nutty's regular guest. Or antagonist. Our podcast is like a call-in show where geeks get to debate topics about speculative fiction. We don't really debate. Sure we do. We debate topics such as lame superpowers, the best villains, and our favorite apocalypses. We more like rant, rave, and then have massive nerd rages. People call in from all over the world, sometimes minor celebrities, and we've even had some supervillains show up. Do you ever notice that you never have any superheroes or good guys? I'm a good guy. Compared to what? Mm, antagonist. Not really a guest. Nutty Bites. Nimlast.org. Now here's Chapter 17 of Vatican Abdicator on Glow in the Dark Radio. BC drifts off into the most peaceful, undisturbed sleep he's had in years. No headaches, no voices, no visions, no interruptions. The same can't be said for breakfast. Anita and BC decide to eat breakfast in bed. The comm begins ringing early. I've got to take this, Anita says. Go ahead. She takes two more calls as they try to eat breakfast. When the comm rings a third time, BC rolls his eyes. Then Anita hands the earpiece over to him. It's for you, she says, a little puzzled. BC puts on the earpiece, hearing one side of a conversation in progress on the other end. An administrative tech is speaking to someone nearby. Told you he was there. If I was him, I'd have... BC cuts him off. Can't be in here. What's up? Oh, ahem. Ahem. Hello, sir. The Domo representative has asked to see you immediately. He... Is it a he, though? I don't know. I just meant, well, it? That doesn't sound right either. The Domo says it's urgent, sir. Prime representative, sir. Uh, Very important. Where, BC asks. Is he here, on Sirius Central? He he is, sir. He'd like to meet with you as soon as possible this morning, the tech says. Tell him I'll meet with him in uh, an hour and a half, BC tells the tech. Oh, um, I don't think he's going to like that, sir, the tech says, sounding nervous. He's standing here waiting, next room over, and he kind of freaks me out, sir. Bear with him, but don't get too close, BC warns the tech. Okay? You know what I mean? I I do, sir. I sent one woman home already when she began to feel drained. Be careful, BC cautions again. And tell him I'll be there as as soon as I can, in about half an hour. Yes, sir. BC pulls the earpiece off. What now? What do the Domo want? About 30 minutes later, BC meets the Domo representative in a conference room. Anita joins him, all business. No PDA, public displays of affection. We agreed on that before. Business on the outside, fun on the inside. Now it's time for serious business. Good morning, Prime Representative Campion, the Domo says across the table. Good morning to you as well, Governor Kemptuna. Good morning, BC and Anita respond, nearly in unison. She gives him a quick glance. Too cute, no PDA. We must speak of urgent information, the Domo tells them. The tech was right. The Domo almost seems impatient. Speak then, BC encourages the alien. We have, as you know, recently started endeavoring to speak with the Eldred on your behalf. The results have been pretty minimal so far, though, haven't they? Indeed they have, the Domo admits, for the Eldred have seemed unwilling to engage in any form of communication whatsoever. Indeed, BC agrees, echoing the alien. We haven't heard diddly from them either. Now, the Domo continues, although the Eldred have not been forthcoming and have not given us any official indication of their disposition— We have received news of the Eldred from some of our unofficial sources among them. The Domo pauses. This news is not good, I'm afraid, Prime Representative, Governor. No, BC asks. What's the bad news? The Eldred are planning an all-out assault on your original asteroid base and your shipyards. We did not hear of any plans to attack here at Ceres Central, but it could also be a target, the Domo warns. The Eldred want to curtail your ability to move between the stars. They aim to keep you contained within Mars orbit by destroying the asteroid base, the shipyards, and the colonies. Mars orbit? What happened to Jupiter? Suddenly they want to knock us back inside the asteroids? When when is this supposed to happen? When? BC presses. When are they attacking? We don't know when, the Domo admits. But it will be soon. They are moving many forces into this area gathering many thousands of ships up above off the elliptic. Many thousands? Great. But this is what we knew was coming, on some level, didn't we? At least suspected it could happen. 
We've been waiting for this. For the other shoe to drop. Thank you for this information, Representative, BC says to the Domo. You are welcome. We Domo believe this completes our deal in this regard. Good day, the alien says, dismissing himself. He leaves the table and quickly exits the conference room. What? The deal is over? I wonder if the Flays think the deal is over, too. We've got to pull our people back from the colonies. Shit. We'll be easy targets if we're all spread out. Gotta gather ourselves together. Circle our cosmic wagons. And you know Dolomay will jump in at some point. He could adopt one of the colonies as his base. With us pulled back. Shit. It's like chess. Like fucking chess. Move a piece here, another one moves there, three moves later you realize it was the wrong move, and you lose the game. I hate fucking chess. I'm not into playing games with people's lives, either. Move out of the colonies and Dolomay moves in. Pull our SAIF ships back, and he'll attack. And when will the Eldred come thundering down on us? Maybe we can leave some people on each colony, some small defensive forces to protect our interests. Volunteer squads. They'd have to be. Could be suicide. Anita sighs, and BC snaps out of his thoughts. What are we going to do, BC? She asks rhetorically. We're going to fight them, Anita, BC answers anyway. We're going to kick their asses, and they will not destroy our bases. I won't let that happen. Good words, BC. Good words. But can you back them up? I can, with your help, he tells her. She looks him in the eye. Her eyes bore into his. BC feels her measuring him. I wonder if I measure up. And under what standard am I being measured? Anita seems to make up her mind. She takes a deep breath. Great, she says. Her forehead scrunches up as she thinks on her feet. I think I need to relocate to the project base. Okay, BC says. Put someone else in charge here first. I'll go with you when you head over there. You will? she asks, surprised. I thought you'd be heading back to Lunar Prime. I should be where I'm needed. If they're going to be attacking the project base, I should be there, leading our defense. Since when? She gives him an angry, puzzled look. I don't think your government, your bureaucracy, she spits out the word with contempt, will support your decision. They won't want you on the front line. And I'm not sure you should be there either. But you should be. It's my job, she says, glaring at him. Your concern is sweet, but misplaced. I can handle it. BC can hear her unspoken words in his head loud and clear. That's not why I'm going. I'm not trying to insult you, he tells her. Look, Anita. Why am I going? Even the last 24 hours notwithstanding, I think we make a pretty good team, BC suggests. If we're fighting for our lives, and you know we are, I'd really like to have you by my side, next to me in the fight. Anita is still a little flush with anger, but BC thinks he maybe sees a blush rising up in her cheeks behind her ire. I didn't realize you were such a dumb romantic, BC, Anita chides him. She leans over and kisses him on the cheek. You're sweet. Who knew such a mean, vicious killing machine like you could have such a way with words? Is that a compliment? BC asks her. Nah, I wasn't finished. The way you have with those words, it's a way of torturing them and maiming them. She volleys back, then she smiles. I do know what you mean, believe it or not. I can't believe it, and it is sweet, even if you're not exactly thinking straight. Aw shucks. But don't talk like this is our last stand. It's bad luck. We should move, BC says. If the Domo are running scared, the Eldred could be right behind them. They could attack at any second. A romantic and an optimist, she laughs. I'm a realist, he answers defensively. He turns to a comm unit and calls an assistant. Yes, sir. Situation red. Repeating, situation red, BC says. All Solar Alliance forces on red alert. I want Gold Squadron to relocate from Mars to the old Project Asteroid Base immediately. Green Squadron, you're reassigned from Lunar Prime to the Asteroid Base. Effective immediately. Thinking on the fly here. Who do we have where? Where will we need them? Tell the forces now billeted on Cat's Eye to secure the colony and prepare for an assault. From Dolomay, the Eldred, or... Hell, even the Flays might decide to kick us while we're down. Who knows? Now that the Domo have decided that they're done with their side of the bargain, BC looks over at Anita, who is scrutinizing him as he gives his commands. And please remind the commander of the SAIF ships at Cat's Eye that he still answers to Governor Schwartz, okay? Make sure the governor is informed on everything that's going on this time, too, for Christ's sakes. BC, Anita tries to get his attention. Have Green and Gold Squadrons coordinate with the Asteroid Base Defense's SAIF Detachment. Black and White Squadrons are posted there now. Black Leader is the Acting Commander. Report to him. BC, Anita tries again. BC breaks off from the comm and looks over at her. I'm sorry, he says, 
realizing he's been steamrolling along ignoring her. I was on a roll, he says, trying to explain. No, you were, but... What, but what? The more I think about it, as I listen to you sending more ships... Well, here's the thing, she says. She shakes her head. I can't believe I'm saying this. I don't think the asteroid base is really defensible against the Eldred. I don't think, realistically, that we can hold the project base, she says quickly, as if she couldn't say it at all unless she got it all out at once. The shipyards we can defend, but the asteroid base? It's too large and sprawling, too riddled with passages, just too vulnerable. We saw that when Dolome attacked us there. You don't think we can keep them at bay from there? He asks her for confirmation. We've done it before. Not if they're gathering the numbers the Domo say they are. Makes what we faced before look like just a handful of ships. This time, she stops, thinking. This time there will be thousands, BC. Maybe hundreds of thousands. What do you suggest we do? Give them the base, she says. BC looks back at her, silent, surprised by her words. Wow. Didn't expect that from her. Give them the base? Yeah. Send the SAIF squadrons to the shipyards. Keep a token force at the base. Defend, but be ready to cut and run. Maybe plant some explosives? Take some of them out? She explains. Her brow furrows as she thinks. We'll need to get everyone off the base. Starting now, she realizes. Oh? BC asks. Well, she looks away. That's what I would do. Since we're being honest here, do you think we can hold the shipyards? Honestly, I don't know. I don't think so. Really? So you're an optimist, then? BC says sarcastically. I'm a realist, Anita insists, echoing BC's earlier comment. Let's see. BC does some quick thinking. He puts a call in to Commander Dragama from the SAIF Black Squadron. Dragama here, the commander answers. Dragama, this is Bernard Campion, BC says, identifying himself. Well, hello, Prime Representative. To what do I owe the honor? Commander, I have a technical question for you. Is there any chance you could fire the new laser defenses we've installed on the asteroid base remotely from your ship? Um, let's see. I think we can in case of emergency. Hold on, sir. Sure. BC and Anita look at each other as they wait for Dragama to come back on the comm. What are you thinking? She asks him. Before he can answer, Dragama returns. Yes, sir, we can. Even easier than I thought. Their systems can be tied into ours in an instant. It's built for triangulation fire. We can assume control of the base defenses from any of our command vehicles. What? Anita begins, but she stops as BC raises a finger, asking her silently to hold her thought. Excellent, Dragama, that's good news. Thank you, Commander, BC says, signing off. He turns to Anita. Let's get everybody off the project base. Bring them back here to Ceres Central. Leave the base empty, surrounded by a carefully selected super squadron of ships led by Dragama's forces, so the Eldred think we're still there. When the Eldred arrive, we'll fire back at them using the base's lasers as well as the ship's lasers, so it will look like the base is fighting back. We'll be trying to take out as many of the Eldred as we can. Don't get me wrong, it'll be a real battle. And we'll also try to observe them, assess the strength, the size of the Eldred force, see what we're up against. In the meantime, while we keep them busy at the base, we shut down the shipyards and mobilize every ship we can afford to defend the facilities themselves. Shut down the beginnings of the lines now, Anita. Have them focus on finishing up the ships already in production. Get the brain boys out of there, too. BC is thinking on his feet. We should get all our scientists back to Mars, the moon, or Earth, he says, thinking out loud. Damn, he swears, stopping. What? Anita asks. What is it? If the Eldred are striking with such huge numbers... He shakes his head. What? Anita asks again. BC calls up the comm. Get me the colonial governors, he says. BC, what are you doing? Anita presses. We can't defend them. We've got to evacuate the colonies. I'm sorry, Anita. If the Eldred are going to hit us the way the Domo say they are, we can't have our forces spread out all over the place. I'd like to, but we can't defend the colonies from Dolome and the Eldred, and secure our defenses here, too. They're not going to like this, she comments. She shakes her head. I know, I don't expect them to like it, but... He grabs her lightly by the shoulder, so she'll look directly at him. You're giving up the project base, because you know we can't defend it. For the same reason, the very same reason, we have to evacuate the colonies. They're still not going to like it, she repeats. The colonists are all rugged individualists, very defensive. We're connecting with the governors now, Prime Rep. The comm cuts her off as it sputters back to life. You know it makes sense, BC says to Anita 
before he answers the calm. She smiles. I know, she says. She frowns. But I also know them. You're asking them to abandon their homes. They're going to resist. She shakes her head and tells him again, they're not going to like it. And they don't like it. They all take the news badly, and BC comes away from the five-way conversation feeling bruised and verbally battered. He also comes away with a nasty headache. Nowhere near as bad as those old headaches I used to get. Those seem to be gone. No dolomy lately either. No attacks, anyway. Maybe I have shut him out. Now, if I could only figure out how to strike back at him, attack Dolomay with my mind, wouldn't that be something? He's too powerful. I feel like I'm lucky just to keep him at bay. But a guy can dream, can't he? BC and Anita manage to find more quality time together that night. BC drifts off afterwards into an uneasy sleep, anticipating attacks even as he tries to relax and rest. He doesn't feel Dolomay in his mind. Instead, he feels as if he's in Dolomay's mind. BC dreams of being on the bridge of Dolomay's ship, once again looking out through Dolomay's eyes. Dolomay is laughing at a domo sniveling at his feet. Get up! Dolomay shouts at the pathetic creature. Yes, Dolomay, the domo mumbles out of its sideways mouth as it struggles to its feet. I have decided to pay you for your information, Dolomay says to the domo. But I have come to believe your terms are far from equitable. You wish to renegotiate? I wish nothing. I will give you ten of these pale echoes, these humans, to do with as you will, not the one hundred for which you have asked, and you will give me your information, or you will die. You and your entire crew of overgrown leeches will be exterminated. Your ships flown straight into the nearest sun, Dolomay growls. He grins a sharp-toothed grin down at the Domo. Your choice. Or oh, can't. I'm not authorized. Uh, the alien stammers in protest. Dolomay continues to grin down at the Domo in silence, waiting. If Domo could sweat, this one would be dripping wet. A moment, the Domo asks of Dolomay. A moment? Ten minutes, no more. He tells the alien. The domo bows and scrapes and leaves the room, presumably to speak with its superiors. Dolome lets his grin fade. He turns to the pale echo who has been amusing him lately. The lovely Fiza, a fine bitch of her species, weak as they are, perhaps even worthy of a bond back in my day. She tells me they have similar bonds among the pale echoes. Her mind is so small, asleep, closed, not so easily led as Al Salid. Though I bend her to my will, she seems affectionate enough. This concept of love she speaks of, that I've seen in her mind, so foreign, so alien. Though these humans be our offspring, they are very different. This love, their beliefs and religions, these things they have invented. What are they in the end but more excuses for the exercise of will, control, and power? But they are so real to them. I've seen it in their minds. See how they hold these simple concepts to be truth. How they give these ideas their reality. Faiza looks up at Dolomé and smiles. I must admit... Her appetites are much like those of the women I favored in the long ago. Dolomay reaches down to stroke Fiza's cheek, much as one might caress a favorite pet. Fiza plays along and purrs her approval of his touch. She pulls one of Dolomay's fingers into her mouth and sucks on it briefly before Dolomay pulls it away. Yes, strong appetites indeed. The re-entrance of the domo distracts Dolomay away from Fiza. Do you have an answer for me? Do I get my information, or do you die? Dolome asks the alien, matter-of-factly. Have you had your warriors calculate the likelihood of your escape, should you assassinate me? Or try to resist? What say you? We agree to your new conditions, the Domo says to Dolome. Excellent, Dolome exclaims. He motions to one of his lieutenants. Have ten prisoners chosen at random and delivered to the Domo ship immediately, Dolome orders. The lieutenant nods and leaves the room to carry out Dolome's demands. The Domo brightens and straightens up. You see, Dolome says to the Domo, I can be quite reasonable. As can we, the Domo insists. We gladly provide information when compensated adequately. Well then, Dolome says to the alien, go on. The Eldred plan on attacking the humans in the very near future, the Domo says with important weight. 
Dolome laughs him off. That's it. He turns to another lieutenant. Go stop the prisoner transfer. The man runs to follow Dolome's orders. News fucking flash, Fiza comments. Indeed, this is not new information. This is old news, Dolome says in disappointment to the Domo. Now you're going to die. No, no, wait. The Domo begs for its life. We understand this, but there are more details that you do not know. The Eldred believe the humans need to be contained. With this in mind, they will be striking the humans' asteroid base and shipyards sometime in the next month. Not their colonies? Dolomay asks, noticing the omission. Evidently not, the Domo says. They seem to believe striking the asteroid base and the shipyards will cut off the colonies. They seem to believe the colonies will wither and die, cut off from Earth by the bases and shipyards' destruction. Right, Dolomay says, pondering the Domo's words. They seem to believe this. They would seem to be wrong. He laughs. Of course. But I can see why they would believe that. Seems plausible they would. That, that reminds me. Dolomay breaks off to call over to an underling. We need to put another raiding party together. Get a crew together. I want to hit the hydro gardens again on crankshaft. Restock the larder. The underling leaves, and Dolomay turns back to the Domo. What about their new base on Ceres? The Eldred will advance on Ceres after they hit the asteroid base in the shipyards, the Domo says. Oh, will they? Dolome asks, amused. He almost snickers. I think they underestimate the tenacity of the Pale Echoes, Dolome muses. They'll give them a good fight. The servants, Dolome sneers, using the ancient name of the Eldred from when they served his race. Don't realize, can't really comprehend how much like their masters these humans really are. The servants may win. They have stolen our old technology and now call it their own. They have powerful weapons at their disposal, after all. And they plan on striking in unprecedented numbers, the Domo adds, a force the size of which the universe has not seen in a million years. I remember fleets and numbers that would dwarf any the Eldred may be able to muster, Dolome scoffs. Still, I'm sure they can amass ships enough to stagger the humans. They plan on attacking en masse, do they? The Domo nods. Interesting. The servants seem to be gambling. They'll beat the humans, of course, but they will pay a very high price. Dolomay's grin returns, spreading wide across his face. He looks around the room at his followers. When they pay that price, we will then exact an even higher price from them. We'll wait until the humans have been defeated. They will not go easily, no matter what the Eldred think. There will be great damage on both sides, but ultimately the humans will lose, and then we will strike what is left of the Eldred. We'll wipe them out and then take over what is left of the human race. Earth will become the home of my new empire. You talk pretty big, Pfizer cracks. What if the humans don't lose? Dolomay laughs out loud. You still overestimate your little species, you pale echoes of my great people, don't you, my pet? He patronizes her. I hate it when you call me that. Pfizer pouts back up at him. You all make lovely pets, so obedient, so easily trained. Dolomay purrs at her. Aren't you my pet? Don't fret, pet. You will love me. You do love me. He reaches over to stroke her cheek and her eyes go blank. She looks confused and then leans in to accept Dolomay's caress. There now, my pet. Isn't that better? He asks. She smiles a confused smile at Dolomay. Sure, Dee, she says. Dolomay smiles and turns back to the Domo. When will they strike? As I've said, we do not know for sure. Within the month, certainly, the Eldred already gather their forces in preparation for their assault. I see, Dolomay says, thinking. Well, thank you, Domo. So, you will have your men deliver on your bargain now? The Domo asks him. You will have them continue the prisoner transfer? Dolomay nods at the alien. Dolomay beckons and one of his lieutenants saunters over. The Domo looks on expectantly. I want you to take care of the Domo ship, Dolomay says to the underling. Destroy the ship now. Yes, sir. The underling acknowledges, spins, and turns to execute Dolomay's orders. But you promised to... The Domo begins to protest. 
Dolome pulls a beam gun from his side and fires point-blank at the Domo. He lifts the beam as he fires, slicing upwards through the alien. Smoking jagged halves collapse to the floor at Dolome's feet. Fly their ship into the sun, Dolome commands. He smiles over at Fiza. A promise is a promise, after all. Fiza! Who said that? Dolome says, confused. No one said anything, boss, one of Dolome's men says to him. Dolomay seems confused. A strange thought occurs to him. I am not alone, am I? Is someone there? Who is there? Who is in my head? Get out! BC feels himself snap back into his head as if he's suddenly fallen from a great height. He tries to breathe, but he struggles, the wind knocked out of him. Finally, a sharp pain in his chest accompanies a gasp that begins to refill his lungs. His heart is pounding, matching another pounding he can hear. Someone banging on the door to his room? No, banging on the doors in his head. Dolome. BC envisions the doors in his mind. They're vibrating, but holding. He didn't seem to know it was me. Was that for real? Anita stirs in bed next to him. You okay? She mumbles sleepily. Fine, he tells her. Just had a fucked up dream. Either that, or a vision into the mind of Dolome. I heard you shout that woman's name again, Anita says. Waking up more, I'm really starting to not like this FISA person. She's a UTZ agent. BC sort of tells her the truth, but she's been kidnapped and warped to the will of Dolome. He calls her his pet. He'd like to make us all his pets. Meow, she says, turning back over. Tell me more in the morning. Dolome wants to swoop in after the Eldred hit us, BC says. Wipe them out and take us over. What else is new? Anita half asks as she drifts off. I don't think I can sleep now. Was that real? BC drifts off into an uneasy half-sleep, tumbling over the surface of slumber. Never quite relaxing, his sleep disturbed by thoughts of tactics, ship counts, and other battle plans. He finally gets up out of bed. Can't really wake up when you haven't been asleep. The dream remains fresh in his mind. In the clear light of day, BC is even more convinced that his glimpse inside Dolomay's head was real. I was inside his mind, felt his thoughts, vile as they are. To him we are just pets, pale echoes, insects. He knows he couldn't take us, our solar alliance, and certainly not the Eldred, not straight up in a fight. But he figures he can mop both of us up after we spend ourselves on our throwdown. Too bad he didn't think of his base's location while I was inside of his head. And poor Fiza. There was some of the old Fiza there, but he's controlling her pretty tightly. On a short leash? She seems to have been tamed. What do they call it, that syndrome where captives begin identifying with their captors? Patricia Hearst syndrome? Something like that. Saw it in a movie once. A lot on your mind? Anita asks, startling him. I didn't hear you get up, BC tells her. Yeah, I've just sort of been laying there half asleep, knowing I have to get up soon. Just kind of waiting for the alarm to go off. I always wake up just before the alarm goes off. You're a freak, BC kids her. Why do you need an alarm clock then? Why not just get up at the right time? If I don't set the alarm, I don't wake up. But you always wake up before the alarm. The alarm never wakes you up. I wouldn't say never, she says. Aha, BC says in mock prosecutorial glee as he pretends to catch Anita in his cross-examination. He crosses over to the bed, bounces down, and begins to tickle her. Oh, the governor of Ceres Central is ticklish. She is. Anita is giggling and trying to twist out of BC's reach. Stop! <laughs> Cut it out! Oh. <laughs> Anita gets out between gasps and giggles. BC stops to kiss her, ending his tickle torture. They crawl back under the covers and make love, until the alarm finally does go off, at the most inopportune time. Let it... Uh. Let it ring, Anita gasps. The alarm goes off for another few minutes before they finally disentangle. BC smashes the snooze alarm down to shut it off. Still giggling a little, Anita pulls him into the refresher with her and they shower together like a couple of teenagers. But after a few minutes of forgotten responsibilities, they leave the refresher and dress to meet the day as the prime representative of the Solar Alliance and the governor of Ceres Central. They kiss briefly once again before they leave her quarters to face the day. I've got to run, Anita apologizes before taking off. I know, BC says. 
I'm going to grab some breakfast and get cracking. Want to join me? Sure. That was Chapter 17 of Vatican Abdicator on Glow in the Dark Radio. Time to prepare for battles. Plural. BC's expanded abilities seem to allow him to spy on Dolome. Poor Faiza. And the Domo cautioned that the Eldred were gearing up for a major assault before the Domo themselves cut and run. Yeah, we're out of here. <laughs> We'll hit breakfast with BC and Anita as the battle prep continues when we head into Chapter 18 of Vatican Abdicator on our next episode of Glow in the Dark Radio. Again, I want to thank my patrons who help keep the podcast going. And if you want to find out more about becoming a patron or what that involves, just go to patreon.com slash glowinthedarkradio or go to my sites and follow the links to Patreon. And be looking for the Smashwords July Summer Winter Sale, which is coming up July 1st through the 31st at smashwords.com. You'll be able to get the Vatican Assassin Trilogy under one cover and the Collected Adventures of Alibi Jones as the Chronological Omnibus under one cover. Each of those 50% off as an ebook for just $2.49 apiece during the Smashwords July Summer Winter Sale coming up July 1st through the 31st. And there's a link in the show notes for that. And that is all for this week. I am your host, your writer and reader, Mike Luoma. Thank you again for listening to Glow in the Dark Radio. Glow in the Dark Radio. This podcast presentation is copyright 2023 by Michael F. Luoma and is protected under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License CC by NCND 4.0 Music by Kevin McLeod. You can find his work at Incompetech.com Mike's books are available in ebook, paperback, and audiobook wherever you find books online. Get links and more details at glowinthedarkradio.com and mikeluoma.com. This has been a presentation of Glow in the Dark Radio. <laughs> <laughs>